Thanks for staying with us. So joining the conversation this morning is the Sector Commander, Federal Road Safety Corps, Ogun State, uh, Mr. Hamed Umar. And this is because of the gridlock Lagosians especially experienced on Thursday night, Friday night, and I'm told also it, it ran into Saturday night. I know somebody that was in drag traffic for six hours. I had to go pick her up at the gate at, at past 11. And she left her office at exactly 5.05. Five. Some others stayed seven hours. Others slept on the road. Wow. So wow. When, we're here, our, our guest, Hamed al Umar, who is sector commander, will tell us exactly what is going on with that road and how soon it can go back to normalcy. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Yes, good morning, TBC. Thank you. Good morning. Good to have you. I know you are the hottest topic today in Lagos because <laughs> everybody wants to know what is going on. We know there's road construction ongoing. We know there are police and um, traffic um, officials on the roads. But yet, we're still staying six to seven hours. What's happening, sir? Okay, um, there are so many... Uh, interplay of factors there that lead to that gridlock. Uh, number one, the natural characteristic heavy density traffic flow of that expressway. That expressway is the busiest, not just in Nigeria, but throughout West Africa, with an average daily flow of mm -hmm. a little above 50,000 vehicles, and at peak periods, about 60,000 vehicles. So with that, it is, of course, the busiest in the whole of West Africa. And this one is a natural phenomenon of expressway. So the second factor is the ongoing reconstruction exercise. So when you know that there's 50,000 cars passing through that place and there's a road construction, we expect that there are adequate detours created. Hello, sir, are you there? Hello, sir. Yes, so, I'm there. Yeah, so you told us that there are 50,000 cars plying that yeah. road, and you told us there's the construction going on. Go ahead, yeah. please. We're following you. Okay. okay. Now, but the, the ongoing reconstruction exercise is not the problem. The problem is the human factor, the impatience of the motorists. Okay. You know, naturally, for the, um, for the construction to go smoothly, the road has to be demarcated. There yeah. is narrowing of that lane, the inward Lagos especially. That is where the ongoing uh, reconstruction exercise is going on. So mm -hmm. now motorists, instead of you know, being patient to follow all the rules and regulations of the business of mobility, no. They tend to exhibit all kinds of you know, uh, uh, bad behaviors, which now uh, compounds the whole problem. Like, for example, the route violation, the issue of route violation, that is following of one way, driving against traffic, you know, illegal proliferation of access routes onto the expressway, which further compounds, you know, the management of the expressway. So the problem is the human factor, the impatience on the part of the motorists. That is what is making the whole problem complex, not the ongoing uh, reconstruction exercise, I see. Um... Sir, what you are explaining as impatience, I just call lawlessness. And the idea of having the FRSC, the LASMA, LASMA, and police is to reduce lawlessness. Because lawlessness will thrive where there is no implementation of the laws. So I feel really shocked that despite the presence of all these agencies on, those, on, the, on the road, Knowing the kind of traffic we are going to expect would happen when you, you trim down a three lane that is carrying, um, conveying 50, over 50,000 vehicles into a yeah. single lane. Why was it, does it seem like yeah. it's, you, the, your agencies couldn't collaborate with other agencies to ensure that there is less lawless, um, lawlessness within that axis? Yes. Uh, the, in fact, let me start with the synergy between the law enforcement agencies. Uh, involving even Lagos and Ogun State, the police, the FRC, the police, even Nigerian Army, the LASMA, and the Trace Pool of Ogun State. The synergy and the collaboration towards the extent is very, very uh, excellent. But just like you observe, I mentioned the proliferation of the illegal access routes onto the expressway. Take, for example, there was one created, you know, the, the art route, just by Mekano, which now the motorists were using to OPIC. And when they reach OPIC, they now 
tend to now uh, access the expressway, thereby causing blockage to the other motorists on their right of lane on the expressway. So we call on Julius Vega, they block that route, that illegal access route. And you know what? Before morning, before morning, this morning, some lawless motorists went there and removed those uh, barricades. And it compounds the problem further. So what we did again is we can we dock out the the, 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 actual, the access, mm. which now makes it possible for the motorists to pass that way. And it now give us easier, uh, it make, it, make it easier for us to manage the traffic flow there. Okay. So this okay. is just one of the... Mm. All right. Okay. So instead of maybe always having to react to something that has gone wrong, um, are there no precautionary steps to take? So that, um, and, and if there are, why aren't we taking them? And would you say that uh, maybe you don't have enough personnel? And I'm talking across um, all the um, stakeholders. I'm talking FRSC, police. Is there a reason why we're not able to take precautionary steps? We already know there's construction going on. We already know that there's um, high vehicular movement on that road. We know that it will cause gridlock, it will cause a problem. Can't we have more personnel stationed on that axis to make for an easier mm. and less stressful um, movement during this period? Okay, I, I believe we have, I can say we, 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 we have enough personnel as backed up by the police, the LASMA, the Trace Co of, of the states, and even Nigeria. Mm. I mean, so I can say we have enough personnel. Mm. But the issue there is, the lawlessness, the extent of the lawlessness on the part of the motorist. If the motorist will cooperate with the traffic management agencies, the security agencies, able to move smoothly. Keep the <laughs> if, you, if you observe the situation very well, mm. it is if the traffic flow is usually static. No, it's not static, but slow moving. And people, instead of exercising patience to keep moving, no. They tend to exhibit all kinds of lawlessness, yes, which do. now compounds the traffic flow mm. and make it a grid block, turn it into a grid block as such. Well. So I'm told we have our engineer, Ademola Kuti, back is the director of Southwest um, Highway from the Federal Ministry of Works. Thank you, sir, once again for joining us. Um, so my first question is exactly what your expectations are. Because we've just been told uh, from our reports that 50,000 vehicles run through that Lagos Ibadu Expressway every day, and now the roads are being collapsed into one lane. And it doesn't sound logical for construction to only provide one lane. In your view, what kind of brief was given to the constructors, the, 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 the contractor, and how do, exp how do we hope to ease vehicular movement around that axis? Oof. Can we talk to... Maybe you should call us on the phone, because he obviously can't hear me. Can we go back to Mr. Ahmed Umar? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me quickly correct. My name is Adedamola Kuti. Uh, Adedamola Kuti is the right name. Uh, well, like the commander stated earlier, that road is the busiest in the whole of West Africa, if not in the whole of Africa. And uh, it's the same road that we are trying to reconstruct and at the same time making use of it. So there are bound to be one form of inconvenience or the other. However, you see, uh, at the construction area, that's the one that created the problem on Friday, the one around OPIC area, just a stretch of about 1.3 kilometers. You know, we provided, we just made a diversion, divided the road into two. We you know work on half of the road with the intention that the uh, motorists will use the remaining half. The outbound Lagos, that one is completely free. By the traffic management plan, it's supposed to be completely free. But what we experienced is uh, some drivers, you know, around Warewa area, 
they went in on those earth road, drove on the earth road, and then came out around the uh, OPIC, you know, thereby causing confusion at that uh, OPIC junction. You know, and uh, you see, driving against traffic will really distort whatever, whatever plans you have on ground. And it may interest you to note that even this stretch, anytime you have this gridlock, or rather anytime you have this traffic on that road, the maximum, maximum length is about five kilometers. And with five kilometers, and when you drive at a construction speed, a liable construction speed, maximum is 30 kilometers an hour, within 15 minutes, you're out of the traffic. You're out of the traffic within 15, 20 minutes. But you see, there are certain factors that now tend to delay movement on the construction zone. One factor is driving against traffic. The second factor is trading activities around that area. You know, you see some commuters buying this, buying that, picking up passengers, unauthorized uh, uh, bus stops, mm. picking up passengers, and of course, when vehicles break down, or maybe when you have any form of accident. But of course, we have provisions for tow trucks to pull out any vehicle that breaks down, you know, within that stretch. Engineer, so the, the issue is let, that me, let me, let me pause We have already for a provided a diversion. That diversion has been provided, moving slowly, and then, and then the diversion has been provided in such a way to allow two vehicles move at the same time. Mm. So moving at 20 kilometers an hour, you get to your destination. Let me, let, let me pause you for 15, a second, 20 sir. Minutes. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so given the scenario you just painted, you know, anybody would think that um, this must be easy. You, and it is just the fact that uh, motorists are not obeying the law. But in your own in your own observation, would you say that we have enough personnel on ground to make sure that people just keep with, you know, um, within the lanes that have been provided during this period. Are there, um, would you say that um, we, uh, the personnel on ground is doing a good job or they are just too overwhelmed by what is happening? Yeah, for the personnel on ground, well, they are not doing badly, you know, but uh, we'll continue to uh, collaborate. And uh, in terms of getting more personnel on ground, we have a corridor commander whose job is specifically on that Lagos Ibadan stretch. We are in touch. And then, of course, uh, we have our other personnel in Lagos. The, the last month people are also there. They've been very, very also cooperative. So we'll, we'll see the possibility of increasing the number of personnel on ground. But first and foremost, please kindly uh, urge our people, you know, to keep to their lead. Everybody should be disciplined on this road. So that we can, we are already on our final lap, our final lap, and then whatever we have to do, you see, they should bear with us, bear with us, and then allow us to finish this What are the timelines for this final lap, sir? What are the timelines? We already, as I mentioned earlier, we've already completed 37.5 kilometer, remaining just about 6.1 kilometer, both bounds 12.2. That's how long? How many months? Okay. I know there's a major delay, delay, so it takes a while to get the question across. Please, I wanted to ask concerning, um, you know, sometimes our leaders, people in charge, are not on ground to see what is happening. I drive through that road. It is not streamlined into two lanes. When you are comparing heavy-duty trailers passing the road, I drive there. Maybe two cars can pass through. When you have a trailer, everybody is on one lane. So that, that is one major issue. Also, it is it's not a diversion. If there's no alternative way, you ask everybody that is on that road doesn't have any other option but to join that long queue. Don't, don't you think, sir, it would have been better if we provide an alternative way before we um, create this diversion? And since it has been done, the last time we spoke to the sector commander, he, he mentioned the fact that we have enough men on ground. You also reiterated that. But how come the men on ground are unable to curb the lawlessness going on? And then we still claim that it is going, it is okay when it's obvious people are disobeying and the men are not able to stop them from disobeying. Yeah. Um, for the alternative road, <laughs> well, I don't know what you mean by alternative roads, but uh, 
All those earth roads that you see, they are not alternative on Lagos Ibadan. Now, if, there is a, if you don't have any serious, apart from those who live along that axis, people can, we expect some of the motorists, knowing fully well that construction work has resumed on the walk, on the road, well, some of them can make use of Ikorodusha Gam. Those of them who are going towards uh, the east, they can make use of Ikorodusha Gam. Uh, on Ikorodusha Gam, almost about 22 kilometers of that stretch has been completed. What happened on that Friday? We have another, another team. There's another stretch where we are walking between Seven Up and Otedola Bridge. We've not been experiencing this. And it's just simply because there is no way for drivers to go against traffic there. So, and work is all going on. And in fact, that particular street is at the heart of Lagos. And we never experienced any form of serious gridlock. So people, the motorists have been going quietly and they're getting to their destinations. So I think the key word there should be learn discipline, let our people exercise a bit of patience, and then this human factor that uh, the sector commander also mentioned, you know, should be eliminated completely so that we can all get to our destinations. Okay, um, let me let me time. let me go to our sector commander very quickly because we have to wrap up on this. Yeah, sector question. commander, so what yes. Nigerians want to know in a nutshell, what have you done differently between Friday and today? Such that when we drive through that route, we don't have to spend seven hours again. Have you deployed more men? Have you created additional di diversions? What has been done to ensure that we don't have to spend six, seven hours again in traffic on that route? Yes, we ensure that the, the Julius Bega uh, have made adequate deployment of logistics and personnel to speed up the work there, ongoing there. That is one. Secondly, we made more deployment of staff and personnel there from both Ogun State and Lagos State, that is the neighboring uh, command. Uh, these are the things we have done. And uh, another factor you, you fail to, to understand is that one cannot rule out the possibility of a breakdown still while, you know, on that single lane. Mm. We experience breakdown, you know, either of a heavy duty truck or another vehicle, another a car bashing onto the back of another car and so on, and the what motor do was stop to make some fightings out of it. You know, we have to come to intervene to make sure that uh, they don't cause unnecessary blockage or obstruction on the expressway, that they try to keep moving. This is what we have been saddling with, this is what we have been fighting with all over uh, this, this time. So it's one of the factors that is causing the delay. Any slight delay, even for two seconds, or five seconds, it will cause unnecessary uh, extension of the, of, of, the, of the traffic jam. Mm. Yes. Oh, okay, so um, people have also, the motorists have also complained that um, sometimes your personnel are constantly just stopping people, asking for different papers after the other. And I'm wondering, since you already are experiencing a gridlock in that area, is that the best place to stop people and ask for their papers? Can it be done further I, down, you know, that stretch of road? I disagree with this assertion at this point. At this point, we are only concerned with traffic management, ensuring smooth flow of traffic on that expressway. Nobody is asking anybody for traffic papers, uh, vehicle papers, or driver's license. I was, in, let me tell you, yesterday, in fact, all this video, we recorded nil arrest. Our sole purpose there is ensuring prompt clearance of obstruction and ensuring smooth flow of traffic on that axis. No arrest is being made there. Therefore, nobody should say Rosity is stopping him for now on that particular axis, asking him for vehicle particular school driver's license. We don't do that. And another thing I, I want to highlight here is that if you recall last year, December, uh, Xmas, New Year celebrations last year, and during this uh, Idil Fitri Salah celebration, Idil Kabir Salah celebration, it went on very smoothly because we had meeting with the Julius Berger company and we, we prevailed on them that they should move all uh, narrowed lanes, they should widen all those carriageways they narrowed as a result of uh, construction exercise and make the expressway as standard as, as, standard as possible without any restriction, and they did. And the traffic flow was very free-flowing. We recorded very less 
traffic crashes during the festivities, and also everybody was happy and no complaint that time. Even you journalists, you didn't come out to, to, to commend us or to make this observation. It's only when there's problem that people come to begin to make a, all let kinds me, of Let me, uh, because of time, let me so ask, this, this, so because of time, let me ask you this question quickly. So why okay. don't we make some kind of an arrangement for vehicles to pass through the untarred road in the interim, just to create more extra lanes? So we know that, yes, diversions have been made into one lane, but is it possible? Because even road, uh, most vehicles actually do go through the untarred road, but can we then make it a legitimate route to pass the untarred place where we can have more lanes to pass through? Well, well I, 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 I feel it, it, this question is better redirected to the to the federal ministry of works. Okay. The, the, the supervisor there. Right. Yes, yes. All right. Let me talk to you. so um, engineer Kuti. Are you there? Did you get that question? Alternative roads. They are not alternative roads. Our stance. They are not alternative roads. Like, uh, so what we, you see, this road, recall this road is being expanded. This road is being expanded from the original four lane to six lane. And uh, so once you have this expansion, and then of course we still give allowance for the four lane to move on the diversion area. We still give allowance, and then of course, I want to also mention here that between Friday, or rather between Saturday and uh, yesterday, we carried out some palliative work just to ensure that there is uh, uh, easy passage along that uh, axis. So the U-turn, the U-turn at OPIC, and then the diversion area. We've already carried out uh, some palliative works there. And palliative work will be a continuous thing, pending when that stretch is, the other stretch is completed and they move traffic to this, uh, uh, to the completed section. Timelines. So, yes. Okay, go ahead. That's exactly what we want to find. Timelines, sir. Everybody wants to know when. How long Start will this to take? finish. When mm -hmm. do we end this construction work? Schools will be resuming in September. People are scared. Well, for the completion, you see, we have a presidential mandate to finish the entire Lagos Ibadan, the car the main carriageway, to get it completed before the end of this year, December. Before the end of this year, 2022 we should be done with the main carriageway on Lagos Ibado. No, we're talking about this gridlock, this gridlock we're experiencing. It can't be till the end of December, to, to December. So please, this because gridlock we, that we, we express, this lane that we collapse, how, how fast will your men complete it? This phase. So that at least this phase, we, are, we go off this phase and you can move to another section. Okay. Okay, I think that's all we can take on this segment. Um, so on the information we have so far, is that they're going to deploy more men from the sector commander. They're going to deploy more men. More men. So they do need more men. And um, they're also going to ensure that um, they... Um, so, and also they they're ensuring the... they're going to be finished in due time. Yes. So, but I don't think, I think that, that's pretty much all we have from today's uh, uh, conversation. I'm trying to see if we got some good no news. Of comfort. Well, yes. So, not, what, no we, what we heard on both sides is really that motorists need to, behave, need yeah. to behave so better. So, also, thank more. you, Maria. So, the feedback also from, to us is that, so the, the, the outbound, according to what the engineer said, outbound is fine. But the reason why outbound was so gridlock is because those on the inbound are passing one way on the outbound. So, so we also have to ensure, to ensure that we don't take the one-way route. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Get more men at the point where they are taking the, the, the word, they're moving into the outbound lane. Get more men to block them or get Julius Berger to block that road mm -hmm. so they don't have access into the so outbound. They block the people to keep away. Uh -huh. So it's a lawlessness. Yeah. So people took so, it away. So, so that means we need more enforcement. Yes. That, and, enforcement. And, we need the, and we need we need enforcement that will not create more hardship on people. Yeah. So it has to be fast. Whether you are going to unscrew um, people's um, number plates and say come back and get your number plates at the FRSC no, office, they'll beat you or, do, or take pictures and videos. Nigerians will because, beat you up. because if you don't do something that is fast that can be very fast, it will cause extra gridlock in trying to enforce... These are Nigerians that beat up the law enforcement officials every day. So but, there's... So, so there's but a, if there's a collaboration with, but, with Okada Riders Band, they did a collaborative effort with the task force involving um, more than just one yeah. implementation officer, and it was successful. So if we can do a collaboration, and we I will, need I will tell decisive you one action. Of, one of the things that also sort of sabotages enforcement is that if you give one person 
chance to take one, one way. way. The other person wants to take it. Yes. So you have to look. Because we have voters saying that they have the seen VIPs go there. the personnel do that. So ah, they need see? to do better on Fantastic. that. Fantastic. That's a good point. Because the VIPs come, pressing their horn, and they then don't, 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 don't. they pass. Okay, I think that's all we can take. So these are lessons we have to learn from this. But um, I just hope we don't have to go through that experience again. It was really, really ah. horrendous. That's going to break. When we come back, move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back.